Coming up on this episode of Rebel Report, your Lady Rebels punch their ticket to the NCAA tournament. Also, UNLV softball looks to continue their hot streak. And stick around as the Rebel Report Rundown returns, the segment dedicated to the good old-fashioned debate, and it's all coming up on this episode of Rebel Report. Welcome to Studio B on the campus of UNLV. This is Rebel Report. I'm Jamie Boyle. I'm Jelani Watts. Before we dive into the local sports news of the week, we want to tell you what we're all about. Every week, we cover UNLV athletics, the games, the events, the athletes, and coaches. But we're also here to cover all the major sporting events happening in Southern Nevada. Let's begin with our top story. The Lady Rebels haven't won a Mountain West tourney in their history, but this season's squad looked to change that. Nick Sidorovich has more on the Lady Rebels' quest for some hardware. The Lady Rebels capped off their great regular season with a Mountain West Conference Championship and an automatic bid to the NCAA Tournament. After losing two of their last three regular season games, the Lady Rebels exploded in the Mountain West Tournament, winning three straight, including the Mountain West Championship game. The Lady Rebels' journey started with Utah State, who they defeated 82-69. Next up was a semifinal matchup against the Air Force Academy. The Lady Rebels won once again 61-50. And to top it all off, the Lady Rebels were able to hold off Colorado State and win the Mountain West Championship. After a long season and some growing pains, Coach Lindy LaRock was able to put together the personnel she needed to get this team to a championship. You know, the, obviously last year, the first year, there was like a number of crazy things pandemic, all, all of that, and then for me as a first year head coach, um, you know, a, a brand new staff that is, is working together, we went through a lot of growing pains, um, like you have to believe you can do it before really you can, you can never do it, um, and so then it's just kind of trusting them and, and having, like you said, really good people around you, you know, great administration, awesome assistant coaches, and then, you know, you do need some talented players. The only players were always eager to play for Coach LaRock, including the Mountain West Tournament MVP, Essence Booker. I remember my first phone call with Lindy. She immediately answered the phone, and she got right to it. Like, it wasn't, you know, hi, my name is Lindy LaRock. It was, we're trying to win a championship. What are you doing? So, I was like, I'm trying to win a championship, too. She just stated what we were trying to do from the jump. So, coming in, I expected for us to work hard. I, I knew nothing was going to be given to us. Um, me and her were after the same goal, and it was up to us, um, you know, resembling as a point guard, you got to resemble the head coach, to put that into our freshmen, you know, and give them the encouragement and confidence that they need for us to get here. It is noticeable that this team is united. Coach LaRock believes in all of her ladies, and they believe in her. Reporting for Rebel Report, this is Nick Todorovich. The Lady Rebels will see where their destiny lies when they enter the NCAA Women's Tournament. Selection Sunday is this weekend. The Lady Rebels had a recent loss against the UNR Wolfpack. Reporter Sydney Lum has more. It was a close game here against UNR, but the Wolfpack couldn't be stopped tonight even though our Lady Rebels pushed them to the end of their shot clock multiple times. Ultimately, I thought our defense was pretty good. You know, we kind of got loose in some of our ball screen coverage when they were able to hit our roller, but we did push them to the shot clock late, like multiple times. Although their defense didn't hold up, they were still recognized tonight for their achievement of regular season Mountain West champions. We're a really good team, and this loss doesn't define our whole season. It doesn't take away from the fact that, you know, we won a regular season championship, which is really freaking hard to do, the consistency of that. Winning the regular season championship is not all that they were celebrating tonight. Kayla Brooks is the only senior on the team and was recognized after the game. I mean, Kayla means a lot to us, so just going out and trying to give it our all, putting everything out there for her last home game. I think we just dedicated this game to her and try to play it like our best. This has been Sydney Lum with Rebel Report. Coming up, Rebel Hockey takes on the Oregon Ducks in their last home games of the season. Reporter Connor Torres has more. UNLV Hockey has their final two home games of the season as they face the Oregon Ducks in back-to-back -back nights. 
The UNLV Rebel Hockey Team took on the Oregon Ducks in back-to-back -back matchups March 4th and 5th at City National Arena. The Ducks scored the first goal of the night, but the Rebels tied it up by the end of the first period. The game stalled 1-1 for the whole second period, but there was energy on and off the ice as multiple fights broke out. The Rebels forged their way into a 2-1 victory. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty crazy. Um, time flies really quick, and uh, I haven't had a time to think about it. Honestly, I shed a couple of tears before the game, probably more than a couple of tears. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm just going to enjoy every moment, and, uh, you know, we're just going to go out there, play our game, and get a win, and that's it. Continuing their back-to-back -back matchup, the Rebels were looking to close out the season strong and finish with the bang. This matchup featured a much more physical game than the night before. However, the Rebel offense came out blazing, scoring twice in the first period and leading 2-1. Neither team scored again until the third period when UNLV scored three goals to Oregon's one, giving UNLV the win on senior night, 5-2 over the Ducks. That's it for the last two home games of the season as the Rebels send off their seniors. I'm Connor Torres, reporting from Rebel Report. Go Rebs! Good luck to all the seniors with their future endeavors. Your Vegas Golden Knights had a nail-biting victory last week against Ottawa Senators. Your Vegas Golden Knights defeated the Ottawa Senators 2-1 in what was an intense game of hockey, with the game tied at 1-1 heading into the last five seconds of the third period. Vegas superstar forward Jack Eichel scored a beautiful power play goal to win the game for the Knights. Yeah, honestly, the Knights have been a little rough this season, but I think if we just stay positive and the guys just put in the work, they could really turn it around. Absolutely. You know, that's what Vegas is all about. We just have to maintain that optimism, knowing that they'll go far, and, you know, they'll keep it going. Yeah, of course. We just have to show our Vegas pride. Absolutely. Vegas pride all the way. The West Coast Conference Tournament happened at the Orleans Arena this last week. Lexi Ingdahl has more. Hey guys, it's Lexi Ingdahl here with the Rebel Report, reporting on the WCC Conference Championship Games for both the men's and women's games in the Orleans Arena. I'm going to give you guys a recap on who won both championships. It's a good day to be a Gonzaga basketball fan. Both the men's and women's teams took home the first place trophy for the WCC Tournament, solidifying their bids in the NCAA Tournament. The women's team managed a 71-59 upset over number 15 BYU. The Bulldogs maintained the lead throughout the entire game, with the Cougars' only lead being at their first bucket of the game. Head coach Lisa Fortier had a few words to say about their performance. I think that the last four or five games, we've been much more in character, and I don't know, I don't know what it has. I think they've found something within themselves. Um, we've tried to pull it out of them, we've tried to push it into them, um, and I think really ultimately they have to find it, and they certainly have, and hopefully that will carry us through our next few games as well. The men's team beat St. Mary's 82-69 to Tuesday night, just a few weeks after an upsetting loss to them during conference play. Ramir Bolton had himself a night, leading all scorers with 16 points, while two other players scored in double digits. In the post-game press conference, Bolton explains his role for Gonzaga. I um, mean, yeah, you know, I definitely wanted to be a part of that, you know, part of the winning culture. And, you know, just, you know, prove, prove myself, you know, coming off of 2-22 and 22 team. You know, people may say, you know, you're a loser, you can't win games and things like that. So, you know, I just want to prove to myself and everybody else, you know, I can, you know, do what it takes to get things done. This has been Lexi Ingdahl reporting for the Rebel Report. Sounds like it was a great tournament for the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Thanks, Lexi. The Rebels played Wyoming in their final game at home last Thursday. Jacob Teller provides us with a recap of the game and what's next for the Red Hot Rebs. The running Rebels capped off their 2022 season at home against the Wyoming Cowboys. For the final game at home, the Rebels honored the seniors of the team as well as the seniors of the cheer and dance team. Kayla Rooks from the Lady Rebels also received her flowers for the senior season. As for the game, the Rebels got off to a hot start with Royce Ham popping off beyond the arc to get the Rebels on the board first. Roy Sam Jr. took over the first half with 10 points and he managed to get 10 rebounds throughout the game. Bryce Hamilton struggled to get on the board early in the game due to being double covered. Jordan McCabe and Bryce continued to distribute the ball to teammates left open due to Wyoming's double team on Bryce. As UNLV pulled in front, Wyoming forward Hunter Thompson came off the bench and hit three threes in a row, keeping the score within one possession heading into the half. The Rebels entered the second half with the lead 29-30. to The only lead of the game for Wyoming came when Hunter Maldonado capitalized on a miscue by the Rebels, leading to a layup. It did not take long for the Rebels to tighten up on defense and come away with the lead with nearly eight minutes remaining in the second. Justin Webster helped seal the deal, coming off the bench, scoring 11 points to close the game. 
The largest lead of the half for the Rebels came when Jordan McCabe scored two layups, bringing the lead to 10 points. The game ended with a score of 64-57, to with the Rebels running away with a big win at home. Although they lost to New Mexico in the last game of the season, the Rebels placed fifth in the Mountain West and will play the Cowboys once again in the Mountain West Tournament. Here's what head coach Kevin Kruger had to say after the game. Uh, you know, that was just a, you know, the old team win. You know, I mean, you know, it gets used a lot, but, but it's true. Especially, you know, if you go back and watch it, and I'm sure when we go back and watch it, we're going to see so many things that were done um, by guys that, that just, just kind of gave us that bucket when we needed it or made that pass from Wyoming just be a little off target and kind of save the possession. The Runner Rebels came out victorious tonight, 64-57 to against the Wyoming Cowboys. Roy's Ham had 17 points and 10 rebounds, and they came out with a win heading into the Mountain West Conference playoffs. This is Jacob Teller, reporter for Rebel Report. The Major League Baseball lockout appears to be over. ESPN's Jeff Passan reports that the Owners and Players Association reached a tentative deal on Thursday. Spring training will begin this weekend, and regular season is expected to start April 7th, just over one week after the original start date. Rebel Baseball took the series win over the Cal Poly Mustangs last weekend. The Rebels opened the series beating the Mustangs in a close matchup going into the 10th inning. After the Mustangs scored two runs in the top half, the Rebels answered back by scoring three to the Mustangs. Only win came during the second game where they won 15 to 11. UNLV improves to a winning record of six and five over the weekend. Here is Isaiah Mora on how the Hustlin' Rebels did. On a cold and windy Saturday afternoon, UNLV hosted the Cal Poly Mustangs in the second game of the three game series. The Rebels had the most runs scored in an inning with six runs coming in at the bottom of the seventh. Nevertheless, UNLV fell to the Mustangs 15 to 11 due to the Cal Poly five run ninth inning led by star hitter Brooks Lee, who hit a crucial two run home run in the top of the eighth. UNLV ultimately ended up winning the series the next day, beating the Mustangs 15 to three. This is Isaiah Mora with Rebel Report. Thank you, Isaiah. UNLV baseball season is in full effect, and it'll be exciting to see what the season offers. Here is a weekend recap of the Rebel softball from Jillian Marasini. The Boyd Gaming Classic Softball Tournament took place over the weekend, March 4th through 6th, at Eller Media Softball Stadium here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Here is a recap of Rebel softball. This is Jillian Marasini with Rebel Report. UNLV softball played at home all weekend against a total of three teams, New Mexico State, University of Houston, and Washington State. On Friday, they played in a doubleheader where they won 13-5 against New Mexico State and then fell short by three to Houston later that day. Another doubleheader took place Saturday where they again won one but lost to number seven Washington. They finished off the classic playing Houston and winning in a shutout pitched by Jenny Bressler. After the weekend, Sophia Morales was named Mountain West Freshman of the Week. Look out for your UNLV softball as they travel to Tucson, Arizona this weekend for the Bear Down Fiesta. Good luck this weekend, ladies. Up next, we throw it over to the rundown, where Connor and Hector debate some of the big news of the week, including a huge blockbuster trade in the NFL. If you haven't already, make sure to follow our website for more Rebel Report content. Our website can be found at www.rebelreportunlv.com. There you will find all of the articles and videos written and produced by our students, as well as exclusive stories you won't find anywhere else. Second round or undrafted, who's going to make it to the NBA? I don't know. Ladies, I, I know they just won the Mountain West Conference. You said you think they're going to take it all the way? I hope they do. I feel like they're bound to. You guys, Rebel Report. Hey, did you catch that UNLV game? I did. Oh, I had to work, so couldn't go. You can always look it up on Rebel Report. What's Rebel Report? Rebel Report is a 30-minute sports program on PBS, YouTube, and Facebook. They cover all UNLV sports. Oh, is that it? They also cover sports all across Las Vegas. Oh, I'll make sure to subscribe. Oh, it's 3.30. we got to get to class. Welcome to The Rundown. I'm this week's host, Jennifer Soto. Joining me today is Hector and Connor. On Wednesday night, 
are Lady Rebels won the Mountain West Tournament. So what do you guys think is the next move for them? Well, Lady Rebels clinched their first tournament berth since 2002. They beat three good teams along the way, so I think they have a good shot of going through the tournament, making at least to the Sweet 16, maybe even further. As like, I think they'll be a Cinderella-style team. I don't think they'll be ranked as higher as some of those higher like teams in the Big East and that. So, what about you? I think you're right. I mean, it's their first tournament bid since 2002, but their first conference tournament win since 94. It's the first time they got an automatic a bid since yeah. they won the Big West. Uh, it's a really versatile team. I mean, you have Desiree Young, who was the conference player of the year, but she wasn't even the MVP of the tournament. That was Essence Booker getting over 20 points a game. Uh -huh. And even with all that, even with the big winning streak they had this year, they're projected to only be at best a 13 or a 14 seed. So I think yeah. your Cinderella prediction is definitely going to fit for them because it's a tight, tight unit that from a lower seed can definitely make a long run in the tournament. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's what you're going to expect going into it. you got to beat some of these top teams. You're going to be ranked lower down. You're going to have to get that 16, that sweet 16. I think they have an opportunity to make it as that Cinderella. Definitely. It feels like the first time basketball has been relevant here since Jared <laughs> Tarkanian was around, but it's good to have him back in the big dance. Yeah, it will be very entertaining um, watching them play, seeing if they can pull off that first round upset, which I, I personally believe they'll get that opportunity to do it and keep it close those first two rounds based on where they get and what region they get matched up with. So. And it's awesome that they're giving the fans a chance to see them on national TV. So cool. it'll be a really exciting watch. Yeah. And so also in recent news, Seattle Seahawks traded Russell Wilson to the Broncos. What do you guys think about that trade? Well, I think Seattle got a haul. Um, Drew Locke, Shelby Harris, Noah Fant, two first round picks and two second round picks. But you gave up a franchise cornerstone in Russell Wilson and a fourth round pick automatically makes Denver a Super Bowl contender. Seattle loses that franchise icon, makes a lot of Seattle fans upset. But I think they got an opportunity to rebuild, retool. Um, Denver's gonna be definitely a Super Bowl contender. They're trying to pull the same thing as the Rams when they traded for Matthew Stafford last year and win the, win the Super Bowl. So that's what Denver's going into it thinking, honestly. It's gonna be really interesting to see how this all plays out. You. Like you said, you give up a lot for a franchise quarterback, but I don't feel like you can ever pay too much yeah. to get a franchise quarterback. Now, here's the big kicker. Which Russell Wilson are the Broncos going to get? Because let me read off some stats to you, if I could, for just one moment. First half of the season last year for Russell Wilson, averaging 318 passing yards, three and a half touchdowns, and 71% completion rate. Second half, after the fractured finger, 209 passing yards yeah. a game, a touchdown and a half, 66% completion rate, and PFF had him rated 16th of 35 qualified quarterbacks. So if they get the second half version of Russell Wilson, they definitely paid way too much to get him, and they're going to have to give him a big contract just to keep him around. So it's going to yeah. depend on how Russell Wilson plays out in Denver uh, to see how the trade is really graded in the yeah. end. But if you ever watch that second half se like of the season, he looked like he was hurt. And he just was. played hurt, so. Maybe he played through the injury. I mean, that goes a lot to his bravery. He's never been hurt like that in the past. He's always a player that avoids the big hits and is able to stay upright for the most part. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to see, you know, what happens as far as how he's able to produce for the Broncos. If he can get them to that Super Bowl, then it's all worth it, right? Yeah. You can cry about the future all you want, but I'll do it as I'm polishing the Super Bowl <laughs> ring. So you just saw the Rams do it. I think the Broncos, since it's a copycat league, they're trying to do the <laughs> same thing. And as far as how this affects the Raiders, to be honest, the Raiders always seem to play that division tough. And it's really more about the rest of the season. It's only six games for yeah. that division. So as long yeah. as they can get maybe three and three out of it, I think they should be okay. Okay, but the Raiders, they were a fringe playoff team. Basically, they played the Chargers as a playing game week 18. Right. Um, so I don't know how they're going to fare adding another quarterback, especially where there's four top ten quarterbacks in that division now. Definitely. I think Derek Carr is probably the best quarterback ever to be the third or fourth best quarterback in his own division. But he still is going to give that team a chance to compete. Uh, we have Josh McDaniels now, so it's a whole new coaching yeah. staff. Uh, we've seen how he did with Brady, how he did with Peyton Manning, how he did now this last year with, um, oh gosh, I'm sorry. Um, uh, Mac Jones? Mac Jones, <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, but we'll definitely have to see, you know, how the Raiders can, can rebound because their yeah. path to the playoff definitely got tougher. 
Oh, All absolutely. Right. So that will conclude today's rundown. Thank you, Connor and Hector. Now back to Jamie and Jelani. Up next, we get to know a rebel a little better with the visit to the UNLV chair team. Tired of endless scrolling through sports shows that don't talk about your Vegas teams? Haven't found the right sports show for you? I just wish there was a show that focused on Vegas sports. There is. Really? It's called The Rebel Report. What is Rebel Report? The Rebel Report is a UNLV sports show run by UNLV students that covers everything Vegas sports. To Golden Knights hockey, to Raiders football, to UNLV softball, The Rebel Report has it all. You don't have to tell me twice. I'm watching right now. You can watch The Rebel Report on YouTube and Facebook. And for more sports news, follow The Rebel Report on Twitter. Are you a sports fan and want to keep up with your local sports? Well then listen up, because we have the perfect thing for you. Welcome to Rebel Report, where we cover all things Las Vegas sports. Soccer, we got it. Baseball, we got it. Football, we got it. And basketball? Well, you know the answer to that one. The UNLV cheer team is the heart and spirit of the Rebels. Here's Kimia with Getting to Know a Rebel. Hey, Rebel fans. I met up with cheerleader Rebecca Brahas for a quick interview. Hey, Rebel fans, and welcome to Getting to Know the Rebel. Today, we have a special cheerleader. Hi, my name is Rebecca Barajas. So, what got you into cheer? Um, I've been cheering for a really long time, since I was like 10. Um, I cheered in middle school, I cheered in high school at Borman, and now I'm a third year here. So, what made you pick UNLV versus any other uh, school out there? Um, well, I was born and raised here in Las Vegas, so I just thought like, I want to stay home and obviously cheer on like my hometown, my city. So for the fans to know, what do you do, like to do outside of cheer? Um, outside of cheer, I like to hang out with my friends and I love animals, so I like to play with my dog and yeah. <laughs> what's your dog's name? Ivy. <laughs> okay, so cute. So at UNLV, like what's your major? My major is communications. So after all this is done, what do you plan on doing either with communications or your cheer career? Um, well, hopefully my cheer career will go on a little bit, like, I don't know, maybe the <laughs> nights or something like that. And then my dad owns restaurants here in Las Vegas, so I've always wanted to go and help him and keep our legacy going. Come back next week to get to know another rebel. Thank you, Kimia, for letting us get to know a fellow rebel. Up next, we'll take a look at the upcoming season for the Las Vegas soccer team. Don't forget to check out our weekly podcasts on Spotify every week. We break down all of the big sports stories happening in Las Vegas, including the Rebels, Raiders, Golden Knights, and much more. place for coverage of sports all over Las Vegas, providing stories and content you won't find anywhere else. I'm Jelani Watts. And I'm Hector Solomon. And that's all for Rebel Report. We'll see you next time. And cut! I got two minutes to get to the Max Center before the game starts.
NASCAR returned to the Las Vegas Motor Speedway last weekend, and it was nothing short of exciting. NASCAR fans were treated to a nail-biter of a race in Vegas last weekend that needed to be decided in OT. Alex Bowman and Kyle Larson fought neck and neck until the very end, with Bowman barely edging out the victory in the final stretch. Vegas local Kyle Busch was able to finish fourth despite having to race in a new car, following a crash that happened in practice. We're wishing Kyle the best of luck throughout this season. Vegas soccer returns to Cashman Field. Here's Murad Omesh on how your Las Vegas Lights kicked off their season. The Las Vegas Lights are preparing to begin their fourth official season in the USL Championship after their debut in 2018. The Lights secured a 3-0 win against defending champions Orange County SC in their only preseason game this past Wednesday and showed a great and improved defensive and offensive structure out of their 2022 season leaving fans hopeful of what is coming their way this season. Here is a season ticket holding fans input on the Lights' upcoming season. I'm really excited for the Las Vegas Lights season this year because I feel like I became a fan in 2018 and that this is our best season since because we have a lot of young players and uh, potential stars in our team. And although we may not have been doing good recently, I believe that this is a year that we can possibly get promoted and make a good run in the U.S. Open Cup because we have a lot of young players and old players on our team which can be wise for the new players. And with new youngsters coming in, such as Abraham Romero, Jorge Almaguer, and Chase Bromstead, this Lights team is hoping to finally make a name for themselves in the USL Championship and potentially become a powerhouse team. The season opener is this Sunday at 4 p.m. against New Mexico United. Go Lights! From Rebel Report, this is Murad Omesh. We're very excited for the new season for our Las Vegas Lights. Thanks, Murad. That'll do it for this episode of Rebel Report. Thank you for watching.